Lord God, we are gathered here today in your name because we love you, because we need you, because we want you, and we want more of you. So we pray that we would put aside our worries, our concerns, um, our, our, our issues that we dealt with today, and that we would just quietly rest and empty our hearts and souls and minds of, of everything but you. And we pray that you would just fill our hearts, our minds, our bodies with all the wisdom and the knowledge that you want to bestow on us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so. So today we're starting a new topic. And the topic is adult child syndrome, also known as adult children of alcoholic syndrome. And now the important thing to understand that there, there are two kinds of alcoholics. There's, there's the, the drinking alcoholic and the dry drunk alcoholic. And, and, and mostly religious people, especially um, fundamental fundamentalist religions tend to have more of the dry drunk syndrome. So the, the reason why I thought this was the natural way to go from what we've learned, and I'll just do a little bit of background <coughs> On, on what we've learned already from the painted world is that in our in when we were born and and I've said this repeatedly Einstein said the first question if the child could speak if the baby could speak looking out listening to being slapped on its bottom is the the question the child would ask is, is my world safe for me? And he suggests that the way that this safety is convey, conveyed to the baby is through the face, looking at the face of the parents, especially the first faces that they see, if it's a welcoming face, a smiling face, all, all that sort of thing. And I find it very intriguing that God puts so much emphasis on on the looking in the face for security and safety and love and all these different kinds of things. So anyway, when when we're born, there are some things that are required to grow us really healthy. And we find that in Maslow's theory of of um, early childhood development, need, developmental needs, and 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 everything re rests on. It starts out with psychological needs. We there there are two basic needs that a child a baby needs: psychological and safety which safety includes security and so forth. Um, psychological includes food, water, warmth, rest. As long as a child has that, the foundation that is being laid is, is good. And so the, the, the next two needs are psychological needs. The basic needs, safety and psychological things like food and water, especially. The next two, psychological needs, esteem needs, like prestige and feeling of accomplishment, belongingness and love needs, like intimate relationships, friends, and so forth. And then the final one is self-fulfillment, where we need self-actualization. This is where we need to know that um, divinity cares for humanity. Um, this is where one achieves full potential, including create, creative activities, because 
of the, the discovery of the connection with the divine with divinity. My cat is misbehaving. <laughs> so 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 those 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 are the basic needs that a child starts out with. We also learned that every single child has been born into a dysfunctional family after um, Cain and Abel, Ad after Adam and Eve, because Cain and Abel were born in a dysfunctional family because sin is the major dysfunction. And of course, you know, the first murder happened in that dysfunctional family and so forth. But all human beings since Adam and Eve have been born into dysfunctionality. But it's the degree of dysfunction to which we were born. We also learned that when God created babies, because he created Adam and Eve from from scratch, but they were able to have babies. And God designed it so that the babies, so that the babies would be born with two selves. The private self, where the emotion and all, all feelings, all of those things are lodged in the private self. And the public self, also known as the conforming self, is what we see, the, 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 the self that grows chronologically. God created those two selves, and the intent was that both would grow together and be integrated round about school age. 12 to 15. But because of sin, when sin comes into the life in the dis and the dysfunctionality that sin brings, into there's trauma that causes the private self to not grow anymore. And, and that private self can stay as a child from birth age to, to school age. And at the same time, while that traumatized child isn't growing anymore, growing emotionally or anything like that, the conforming self has grown into an adult. And, and psychologists have come up with this idea of an adult child to include both selves. So you still have the grown up 50 year old conforming self with a five year old private self. So so the discussion that we're going, and I'm laying that foundation so we can go into the discussion about the adult child syndrome. So the adult child is a grown-up body with a child inside, an emotional child inside. I, I mean, an, a five-year-old child inside whose emotions have not developed beyond that stage or it could be a 10-year-old child, or it could be a two-year-old child, or it could be a, a newborn baby child. So the adult, so they came up with the phrase to indicate the two selves, not the two unintegrated self as the adult child, okay? So any questions on that? Question. Yes. When you say um, the adult could have a newborn child, like in yeah. a child, emotionally, what yeah. what are the emotions for that one? How do you how do you 
um, recognize. Uh, we're going to talk about that um, because there's some behaviors. So what does a baby do? Cry and dependent on... on, on exactly, on, exactly. And, right. and so emotionally, the, this person can be somebody who whines all the time, who yeah. cries about everything. Um, when when they're three years old, what do three year old th they throw tantrums? Throw tantrums. They throw things. They hit people inappropriately. You know, you see some three year olds slapping their moms in the face or something. That's what that's what that means. So so the the adult has a child running their lives. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. So so psychologists came up with this adult child syndrome and 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 what they have suggested is that um alcoholics can be can someone who's an alcoholic can be a sign of the loss or lack of early childhood developmental needs that created in them this adult child syndrome and for for people who are not al alcoholics, it's called a dry drunk syndrome where they behave like like alcoholics, you know, tantrums, hitting, abusive language, and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to look at to examine ourselves to see if over the period of a painted world, did we parent our our private self into integration with the public self? That's that's the question we should end up having answered by the time we go through this this part of the series. Because as we were going through the big the first part of the series we were each one of us identifying our private self at a stage we thought the child the private self had not developed or bottom line all of us agreed that integration may not have happened and we still need to address or adult child so so that's what i'm attempting to do here so what i want to there are three things we need to know about adult child syndrome the symptoms the causes and the treatment tonight i'm going to focus on the symptoms it's a lot of symptoms and i'm not going to rush us through it because I think we should um, ask ourselves, d does, does that reflect who I think I am? So I chose this scripture because I always like to make sure that scripture is involved. And I'm just going to take a moment to check. Uh, uh, Sabrina, are you keeping up with the chat so I don't have to keep going back? Yes, I don't have anything in the chat except for do you want this to go in presentation mode? And I'll be able to handle that. You can hit presentation mode up top um, where it says play, or I can cut it when I go to post. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see it. So, so if right you can... up top where you see that, where it says play right underneath the A in a painted world to your right. A little move your cursor to the right, right oh, there. This? No, back to the left, left, left. Come, right, 
right over the adult. See the capital A on the slide, adult? Yeah. Up a little. Press play there. Yeah. There you oh, go. Okay. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So, so the scripture that I thought we should lay as the foundation for tonight's um, discussion, and I hope it will be a discussion, um, is from 1 Peter 5, verse 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. You know, years ago, after I had been converted for almost a year, this 18-year-old young lady um, introduced me to a text in the Bible in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 58. I'll get back to that, that one. But I just want to share this with you. I think it's Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. So I just want to read it to you to explain to you a profound experience that I had yesterday. That helped me to understand that these years of working on myself, God working in me and through me, the, the, the tremendous promise that God has kept that allows me to do programs like this and really can speak confidently to participants about God's power of healing. So I think it was Isaiah 58, verses 13 and 14. So years ago, yes, it is. Years ago, this 18-year-old young lady said, I want to show you something in the Bible. And as she's searching for it, the Bible opened up to this. And she said, oh, I can't find it right now, so let me read this to you. I wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist at the time. I had been converted and searching. And it says, If because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and honor it, desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own word, then you will take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. And this is what came to my mind yesterday, this promise that God made to me. And I will make you ride on the heights of the earth and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And yesterday, I just realized where I am. And it's it's it it was profound it was poignant it was powerful that's that's what it was for me yesterday that the lord said this to me in the apartment of this 18 year old and 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 she later on introduced me to the seventh day adventist church even though i knew about it i have got to tell you we had relatives who were adventists but my grandmother said absolutely not None of my children will ever be. <laughs> That's what my grandmother and 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 so here's here I was sitting in 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 the worship. We are having week of spiritual emphasis, and I'm sitting in the worship with all these students that I teach among all these very educated people from all different countries. And I'm planning my sermon to speak in South Africa in two weeks. And I'm invited to go to Washington, D.C. to speak at alumni for my university, and so on and so forth. Here, here I am. I immediately had an image 
of this little girl in Jamaica who who's who 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 used to carry her shoes from the bush to the to the pipe the common pipe wash my feet and then put my shoes on to get on the road to go to church or someplace and here i was sitting riding on the heights do you get what i'm saying yes we it, understand it's yeah. been, Got it's it. been an amazing stunning realization that if i should die today i can truly confess that god kept his promise to me there's no way i should be on this study with all of you there's no way it's not humanly possible <laughs> now what brought what what this passage in first peter brought to me is that there was tremendous suffering tremendous suffering you know sexually abused from 2 years old i remember distinctly an adult turned out that it was one of my cousins who 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 was older holding me a 2 year old in his arms under this big tree at Macca Hill was the place and digitally um abusing me sexually clear memory my sister and i went back to that place and we found the tree it was no longer a giant tree because that's how i saw it as a child it was just a little teeny tiny something tremendous suffering that experience threw me out to be promiscuous the 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 little my private self broken broken broke destroyed nothing there so i promiscuous alcohol drugs all of those kinds of things tremendous suffering suffering that i wasn't even aware that i was suffering and then the god of grace called me to his eternal glory in christ and he himself restored confirmed strengthens and established me do you get why i'm so passionate about this program <laughs> yeah. oh yeah yes, very much because because there are so many beautiful people who love god and they're saved and if jesus comes they are going with him but they're not happy yeah and the reason why they're not happy is not because they're not saved and nobody's telling us that it's because they don't know this truth that there's a private a broken private self that needs to be parented carefully loved and parented and treated the way that he or she should have been treated from birth we now become the parents and we parent that private self into integration with the public self and god will himself not an angel but god himself will restore confirm strengthen and establish you amen wow praise the lord how hard so now i can take you to my notes huh now we have an understanding and we're becoming aware of things that we wasn't aware of before yes because sometimes i look at my own life and i and i am saying i thank god for this program yes because now that I, now that i can understand certain things that i i couldn't understand before about myself you know becoming aware of certain things Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I and can really I can ahead. relate that I can relate to that so well. Unfortunately, I was 40 years old. Uh and it so I had suffered with uh, all that um anguish for many years, but um when I was set free from that by the Lord, it it was uh 
I, it, I just that it was like there were chains on me and they were broken and mm -hmm. I could just soar with the Lord. It was such a freeing feeling to be set so, so mm -hmm. free from that, what was holding me back from yes. the joy of the Lord, you know, yes. it was, I can really relate to what you're saying there. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yesterday was like a revelation. It just blew me away. And all night this morning, I've been telling everybody, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I lost myself in business and now I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So now we're talking about the adult child syndrome. And please interrupt me at any time with comments, questions, anything. The adult child syndrome is a psychological condition that describes how adults who grew up in dysfunctional households can carry the same emotional baggage into their adult lives. And, and, and that's the danger of it. You can be saved and love Jesus, but this baggage comes with you. These individuals may experience feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, difficulty in relationships, and have trouble making decisions. This is a summary, Michelle, uh, of the answer to the question that you raised. But we're going to break all of this out in, in the next slide, few slides coming up. Okay. Um, there, there's, there's a, a thought in the back of my mind, Jenna, um, for you to share what made you so excited about Antony de Mello's book. I haven't finished it yet, but he was talking about awareness and it's the things that he says in it. Yeah. They're so very real. Yes. He, and he said, you know, do you think, um, are you thinking this and that and that? No, like it's no to every question he's asking. Yeah, it's yeah. no, and I'm thinking, well, where's the yes? <laughs> so <laughs> it, it is, you know. So that's and it grabs my attention yes. because now it's delving deeper mm -hmm. into things. But when it starts out, it starts out at this um, superficial level. Yes, because the questions he asked, I'm thinking, well, sure, yeah, and he says no. And I said, so what are you talking about now then? So I haven't, I, I haven't finished, I yeah. just got it last weekend. But yes. it's how he presents things, just like how you are presenting it now. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is so simple. Like it seems to be this humongous thing, but when he presents it, it's so mm -hmm. simple yes. that you can find yourself in what he's talking about. Yes. And just like you do, it's the simplicity of things. I do not like to go listening to with these superior brains that put things out I can't understand. Yes. yes. Yeah. And he, it's the simplicity of his book. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he's good. So, we'll thank you. That's, that's, that's so powerful. When I when I happened on that book, I I read it over and over again. Actually, I have a copy on my um, digital that I take with me from time to time. I look at a little, take a little look. That's an idea. I, yeah. yeah I, if you're um, traveling, you could just look at it. Yeah. Yes. That's an, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I am trying to move this thing. Just give me a second. Because this, yeah, that was in my way. Now oh, to get. Yeah, that's better. Let me see if it's better. Hmm. So, ah. 
<laughs> we were I seeing am, quite well from this side. I am struggling with my computer. You can't see anything, can you? Yeah, I can. Now okay. it's gone. Okay, let me try to find it again. I have no idea what's going on with my computer. Oh. <laughs> no. I think one day the computers are going to talk back to us. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I think I think mine tries to do that. Yeah, I know. I haven't. <laughs> I talk yeah. back to it as well, which is really yeah. weird. <laughs> because I I can't find my slides. So I have to see if that's it. No. Okay, let me go back here. I hate it when I'm on a roll, you know? Mm-hmm. But I I must have clicked it off. Can you see? Well, now? you know, you know what I think. No, it's not back yet. It's because this is so important to us. Yes. Paul, the enemy does not want us to get the information. Yep. That's that... what I say, and so I say no. Can't do that. See, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> Uh, but but I'm way off base. Okay. No, I don't know where where I was. Oh, there he is, Tomello. Where? When you get to where you want, Pastor, try to remember to hit that play button up top. Yes, I, I okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I can't find my way here. This, it's, it's like the slides have disappeared. Mm. They are nowhere there. These are old slides. I thought I put the new slides here. That's an old slide. That is just unbelievable and I don't keep these things in my head so let me try again uh -huh. Susan are you there Susan, oh, you're there. Are you have a headache? I'm I very, can't hear you. Oh. oh, now I can. No, now you're gone. Okay. <laughs> Am I on now? Yeah, I was. I was gonna say, and Michelle and Veronica, whoever's on, we should pray. This is when yes, we. I, I have been praying in the background here. Yeah, mm. oh here it is. I have here it been, is. Yeah, I have yeah. been doing that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. 
Okay, now I should hit play. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. The problem is when I hit play, I can't read the top of my, the top part. So I'm going to do this and then hit play. Adult mm -hmm. child syndrome is a condition that affects individuals who grew up in dysfunctional families. The symptoms of adult child syndrome can be far reaching and complex and may include, and now we're going to go through the various symptoms that psychologists suggest. Fear of abandonment. Oh boy, this, this, this was the fear that gripped me my life for too long. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was pastoring in California, if someone moved out of the country and transferred their membership from the church, I would be devastated. I would feel so abandoned. They had to move, and yet I felt as if they abandoned me because of my early childhood developmental issues. I had this intense fear. So I wouldn't make friends because I was afraid they would leave me. I, 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 it was very awkward for me to be in a relationship because I was afraid, fear, 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 always fear. So, So that that was that that was one of my big ones. If at any time you see one that comes up that is more um, relevant to you, just just pause pause me and I'll stop and we can discuss it. Difficulty. Yeah. Hasab, huh? can you have fear of abandonment and not be aware of it? No. You you you, you wouldn't know that? Know, you wouldn't know that you wouldn't be able to say that it is fear of abandonment, but you would feel you would feel afraid of of being left behind, of being left alone, of being ignored, of being um, isolated. Those those are all some of the signs of abandonment oh so you can have those signs but you're not but you won't be able to pinpoint and say this is it like fear of abandonment you will just know un, you're un, afraid un, of un, unless you oh. knew unless right. you knew that there was something called fear of abandonment you right. would probably say i i feel lonely here's what i hear people say all the time i feel lonely when i'm in the midst of a crowd you ever heard okay. anybody say yeah. that yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that that's that's a fear of abandonment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So difficulty trusting others, and I think people don't realize um, how this affects Christians who love God, but they can't trust Him. It's a fear also, of. Go also, ahead. if you, if for example, if. I'm just saying, so like if you're in a relationship and you're clinging, clinging to the other person, yes, whatever relationship it is, and you don't want that's a fear okay. of abandonment, yes. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, Michelle, you you knew it, but you didn't have the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I observe things and I just wonder, you know, yeah. because now that I'm putting things in perspective based on these meetings. You're, you're trying to realize yes. what was causing certain things and then yeah. becoming aware now. So you're saying, oh, so the eye opening yeah. a bit yeah. to understanding. I, yeah. I, I once knew an elderly lady. She was in her late 70s, nearly 80s. And her husband over time had become chair wheelchair bound. And he used to take his walking stick and beat her. You know, mm. if, if he commanded her to push him one way and she didn't do it the way he wanted to, he'd, mm. he, he'd, he'd call her in front of him 
and whack her with the walking stick. And she would not run away. She would not move. And, and she would not leave him because of this fear of abandonment. She would rather stay in a, in, in a situation and suffer unto death than, than, than seek help and, and get out of it. She stayed with him till he died. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. difficulty trusting others is a tendency to doubt other people's intentions and motives, often due to past experiences of betrayal or hurt. And, and, and the big betrayal is in a child, you know, especially a child that's raised in a family where promises are made but never kept. You know, some, someone who's the, the child of a divorce and, and, and the parent that left keeps saying, I'll, I'll see you on Sunday, but Sunday never comes. That, that leaves a deep-rooted sense of betrayal, and it's difficult to trust. I've, I've heard people in church say, I'll never trust anyone. And, and I tell them, you know, what you're saying is that you'll never trust God. Because the Bible says, how can you say you love, God says, how can you say you love me you when see. whom you can't see? Mm -hmm and not love the one you can see. How can you say you trust me whom you can't see? And, you know, I, I asked myself originally, and now I ask people, who is the person that you see the most? Any one of you, answer, answer this. Who is the person that you see the most? Myself, I think. I see yeah, myself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yourself. And and if you say I can't trust anyone, you mean you don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can you say you trust God whom you can't see? And the person you see every day you can't trust. <laughs> so so there's this difficulty in trusting that comes with the adult child, meaning the private self is 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 not integrated into the public performing self. Low self-esteem, a belief that one is unworthy or unimportant, which can lead to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. I think that I should have put low self-esteem at the top of the list <laughs> because I think that happens. And you know the problem, why low self-esteem is so dominant, this is my take on it is because we have all these commercial businesses telling us that unless we drink their drink, eat their food, wear their makeup, wear their clothes, we we're we're not valuable. And 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 we hear it so much that we believe it. But low self-esteem can be a really big sign of an adult child. Perfectionism. Could, uh, go ahead. As I could relate to the last two you mentioned. You mentioned yes. low self-esteem. And what yes. was the other one? Um, difficulty trusting others. No, the one after that. Um, perfectionism. Wasn't oh, there no, another? Fear, fear of abandonment. Hmm. No, something about not feeling worthy or something. And that's Maybe. low self-esteem. That was low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I sure. And, and then the problem was I was getting my self-esteem from what other people said about me. Yes, that, yes. Uh, especially my mother and, yes. uh, and from the sexual abuse and yes. from all that. And instead of, well, I mean, I was only a youngster, but as I grew up, um, I should have understood sooner to get my self-esteem from who God created me to yes. be. Yes. And once I truly was able to absorb that into my 
brain and my heart, yes. my life changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But the problem is, uh, Susan, is that most ministers have no clue about this. True. And and they're doing the best they can from a misinformed <laughs> situation. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I would not have known about it if I hadn't gotten to the place where I I I was desperate and ready to commit suicide when God opened the, the doors for me. Maybe the doors were already open, but I was too hurt and too blind and too everything to see them. But on that specific situation, I began to see things like I'd never seen them before, the availability of help for someone like me. I knew I was saved, but I was miserable to the point of mm -hmm. thinking, I, I can't live like this. I, I, I have to. <laughs> well, I can relate to those feelings. And, uh, and you know what? Um, it was funny because uh, when you say that the one you see the most is yourself, Yes. Well, that's the one I hated the most was yes. myself as well, which really makes mm -hmm. it a difficult way to live when you hate yourself so much, yes. you know. Yes. And uh, and I only thought that God loved me because he had to. If mm -hmm. he had a choice, he wouldn't love me, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. But, you know, when I met Jeanette, that was a, a life changer for me in, in a way yes. that I could see how a person could laugh at themselves. I could also see that a person could like themselves. Yes. And and I thought, huh? Like to me, there was no nothing in between. There was either total hate, self hatred, or total um, narcissistic. You know. Yeah. Uh, and but yet in Jeanette, I think because of the very open relationship we had, like we were very honest with one another. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could see there was something that uh, was peaceful in the middle. And that yeah. was one of the things that helped me to pursue counseling and, and that. So, yes. yeah, set me oh, on the road to healing. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's love, my that's dear. Yeah. <laughs> she has that effect. She has that effect even long distance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before I go further, I wanted to um bring a point that um uh, about the trusting, trusting yeah. yourself about trusting others, right? So how can a person trust trust is difficult to trust is somebody difficult to come about? For example, if you are accustomed to being deceived or being let down or being, you know, yeah. and you go through life with a lot of experiences or a lot of situations where yeah. trust was broken and all that. Yes. How, how, how can you trust? How can you trust then? I mean, isn't it difficult? To, because you know you're going to get hurt again or you're going to get disappointed yeah. again. Yes, but but you know, um, no no healing. You you don't get you don't ask for healing for something that doesn't hurt. Right, when right. you're when you're sick and you're weak and you're hurting, you ask yeah. for you go to the doctor, you do all of those kinds of things. So the first thing to realize that is if you're if if you're getting deceived. <clears throat> and all of those kinds of things start with yourself what's in what is it in me that is drawing this stuff like a magnet to me because it's you who allows you know nobody can do anything to you did you know that right you allow it to happen you you allow them to do whatever they're doing and 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 that may be because you don't trust yourself. You 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 don't value yourself. You don't think well of yourself. You know, there's this phrase called self-care. 
And most people think it means getting your hair done and all this kind of thing, taking a bath or something. But self-care has to start deeper. It has to be the inner you, the private self. You, you have to be able to look in the mirror and say to yourself, and I had to do this over and over again when, when my counselor told me that I had to take a mirror and look deep in my eyes and, and speak to myself and say, self, I, I am going to take care of you and you can trust me that I will be able to take care of you because I have a good job and I'm, and and people respect me and I'm holding on to it so you can respect me. I'm promising you that I'm going to love you. I'm going to care for you. Sometimes you have to talk yourself because you've been brainwashed to hate yourself, to not believe in yourself, to not trust yourself, to not think you're worthy by all of these dysfunctions around you. And so you have to do a lot of self-talk to change the messages that are imprinted in your brain. I, I call it a spiritual brainwashing. The, yeah. Amen. <laughs> the, this, this is how I washed my brain clean. I, I, I use the um, disciples' prayer, our Father. I use the Psalm 23. I use... I yeah I had to I had to repeat those every time I felt distrustful of myself because when you distrust yourself you let people in and 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 they take advantage of you and they betray you and all because you're not able to see their motives and their intentions right away or sometimes when we distrust ourselves we see that that person is not trustworthy for your life Mm -hmm. But we say, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm being, I'm being selfish, or I'm being hard on them, or and so we reframe them so that they fit in our lives, and then they betray us, and they, then we say, Oh, I knew this was going to happen. Well, we don't have to begin the process. I hope that's helpful, Michelle. I'm talking. Yes. Fast. Yes. yes very. <laughs> yeah. So, so you begin with yourself that private self that you're parenting into wholeness. You you convince that private self. You say, I love you and I trust you. And I'm going to be here for you. And, I, and I'm not going to lie to you. Beca because that private self allows lies because it needs, it, it it's looking for comfort and, and all of those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Every time Satan would throw an attack at me, I would say Psalm one thirty nine fourteen that I am fearfully and wonderful. Yes. And yes. God's works are wonderful. Yes. And that includes me. And uh, yeah, when you talk about, say about self-talk, yes. that what you have to do, arm yourself yes. with, with those scriptures and stuff. And uh, and that will drive away Satan, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 it will clean out the the voices, the negative, devaluing voices, and replace it with with that voice of God in your head, telling yeah. you how valuable you are and how He trusts you and loves you and all that. Yeah. Mm hmm. That, that's and then once you have that different sense of <laughs> self yes when other people betray you because they still will yes it it doesn't cut as deep that's you know right. because right. you know it, it, yeah it hurts it's sad you know yeah. but yeah. it doesn't cut as deep as it did before that's right. it, it doesn't was... destroy you let's put that's it that right. way that's right. the, the way I describe it, I say, before it was like a dagger in my heart or in my back, but right. now it's like a mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I still feel the mosquito bite, but sure. you know, yeah. it doesn't last but, but a little while. Yeah. <laughs> so 
beyond self-esteem, there is this perfectionism and need to be perfect or flawless in order to feel accepted or valued by others. Okay, now it's my talk, Miss Person. <laughs> <laughs> but I am I don't need to be accepted or valued by others in in the pursuit of my perfectionism. I think the person who I wanted to please more than it was my mom. Oh yes. Because, uh, yeah, you know, my mother did everything. This everything was polished clean. Everything was so that was how I was brought up. Yes. So that's me. I, and my daughter said to me one day when she's married and I visit her, she says, Mom, I'm OCD because you're OCD. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has a place that it shouldn't yeah. be moved anywhere else. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the last, like, since January, I've been going through such terrible things, you know, the cat, my friends. So yeah. I walked into my house and I said, if anybody came here, they would say, that's not me who live here. Yes. And that's <laughs> when I know I, I wasn't doing so good. It was a disaster. My bed was unmade. And my mom says, never do you leave your home without your bed being made yeah. or your bathroom clean because somebody, you may faint and they take you back home. This yeah. dirty bathroom dirty. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's where my perfectionism. And yeah. I'm back because I will come in your house to straighten your, your pictures. Oh, yeah. my. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I I try to do only my friends. I'll go to Susan's house and fix her stuff, and she yeah. can come to mine and fix mine because she's very good at that. Yeah. You know, making things so good. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on my mother. Yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah, so, what I am. I'm a perfectionist yeah, because because it's a learned behavior. Yes. <laughs> yes. She was a wonderful woman. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but the thing is that she learned it somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. from my grand, my granddaddy. Yes, my granddaddy was the old British. You know, he came up in that British system yeah. where yeah. Yeah. the women should do this and the men should do that. So that's where all that came from. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and and the sad thing is that nobody was there to tell them differently to yeah. show. Them differently yeah. And, yeah. and they lived their lives thinking this is the way to live yeah yeah so yeah but um but the one thing she did teach me in all of this i'm always very confident in who i am yes and, and um so i if others don't value me as long as i'm not doing anything to cause the devaluation i'm okay and I said to people, I could be the one black person in the room of a thousand whites. Wouldn't yes. matter to me at all. But Absolutely. that's the Lord. That's all yeah. due to God. Take I wasn't like that, you know, yes. that concept yes. of God. Yes. Yes. But God, I tell you. And yes. Susan and us, when we went to that that, that weekend, <laughs> the renewal <laughs> weekend, it all started there. It's good. Yes. yes. <laughs> but... but the 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 idea is that with all these things comes suffering mm -hmm. you know because because we feel deep inside of us that this is not who i am but i am going to be this because i don't know anything else i don't know why i'm being like this this and and this is what you're going to find about anthony de mello he's mm -hmm. going to show you in in clear and simple way exactly mm -hmm. how to read these things how to recognize them you know how to relate <clears throat> to them yeah so this one i'm just gonna do this Dif another sign of adult the existence of an adult child difficulty expressing emotions a tendency mm -hmm. to repress or hide one's true feelings, often due to fear of rejection or, or judgment. 
I I must say that I never experienced that in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, people have said some really ridiculous things to me, and it doesn't matter. I I I'm I'm getting on where I set out to be. But there are some people who suffer greatly from this, you know, mm -hmm. and and so they're always striving to prove themselves to others that they're worthy of the of of their attention and approbation, affection, all of those kinds of things. Yeah. People pleasing. Now this this should have my name written on it. <laughs> Mine as well. Mine as yeah. well. Yeah, that's yeah. Susan. People, please. Yeah, Susan. That's it. it became an idol in my life. Yes. Yes. And it ruins it ruins good relationships. Well, you gotta work so hard because they well, the way I felt was they couldn't like me for who I was because I was such a horrible person. Yeah. So I had to keep doing things for people. Yes. to please them so that they would like me. Yes. You know, and it's exhausting. Yes. And and it's also part of um oh what's it called when when you're when a person is um oh the phrase has slipped my mind but it, it'll come. It's a habit of putting others needs before one's own. Well there's there's It'll come, often at the expense of one's own well-being. When someone is so, when others are more important than oneself, that is called, oh, the old brain. The old brain is not functioning <laughs> at the end of the day. I hear you. Yeah. Uh -uh, yeah. Mm. And this, this, the next one is isolation. When, when, if you want to know if you're, if you're an adult child, you're functioning as an adult child. Isolation is a sign, a tendency to withdraw from social situations and avoid close relationships with others. Not me. <laughs> well, I went through a horrible depression for yeah. about about 10 years and yes. and that is uh so so what i've had to do is i've had to, i've on medication um yeah. and i'm not i'm not pathologically depressed anymore like i'm healed from yeah. that but i have a plan and uh the first step of the plan is when i want to unplug the phone and lock the doors Yes. I know I have to get out. I have yes. to go out. And uh, it's a first sign of depression of that I'm in trouble with depression. Yes. So because it's easier to stop that depression from, yes. from hitting so hard if you nip it in the bud. If yes. you let it get a grip on you, it's like falling down an elevator shaft. It just goes so fast. You're in the pit, you know. Yeah. But, I, I, uh, yeah. I talked to a student today. She was in my office sobbing her heart out. Mm. And, and she's very, very depressed. And, and as a result of her depression, she's an older student. Mm. She's able to do her classwork. So mm. almost she has almost six incompletes, meaning that these are classes that she took and couldn't finish them, and she's expected to finish them at a certain time. Mm. She, she's eaten herself. She's eaten herself into a huge person. She's mm. eating her pain. Mm. And oh. she's gained so much weight. And mm. and having gained so much weight, she hates herself. You yeah. know. And it's all from this depression. And and then she's isolating herself. She she doesn't want to go to church because she's too fat. She doesn't want to, you know, it's 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 such a horrible cycle yeah. so i was talking with her today and she just sat there and cried and cried and cried and and 
and I really am not sure how to help oh, her. Oh, there's a kitty cat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Be nuts all there's evening. There's a tail in the face. That's yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this has to be part of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a beautiful cat. How many do you have? Just one. Just okay. this one. My daughter has a cat. She has a um, Himalayan. Oh yes, oh, I, I I had a Persian and he died last year. This one was given to me. This mm -hmm. this is a feral. This was picked from a bunch of wild kittens, and he's such a wild boy. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. but he's he's gets clingy sometimes. <laughs> so so. So, so this isolation and what depression does, depression makes. Oh, wait a minute! Else. Wait a minute! You just said the cat gets clingy, and we just got finished talking about clinging. clinging. The other one. <laughs> yeah. You just said he was a. The cat came from a um. From, from a, a feral. Yeah. 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 Okay. So <laughs> it makes sense right. now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and and he he will hold my. He will use his paws to hold my hand, to hold me. He's just. I think I think he misses Sabrina. That's what it is. But Sabrina spoiled him rotten. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so isolation is one of the characteristics of an adult child, and remember. An adult child, it's meaning that the the child is the hey, Mosa, come here. and the adult is the conforming self, and they have not been integrated, so they're 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 living side by side rather than in in one, just in one. So what do we call them when they have integrated? They're become instead of being two selves, they're one. Yeah, what and, and, and they just become an adult. Oh, okay, just an adult. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. The the other the another characteristic is avoidance of conflict, a fear <laughs> of confrontation or disagreement, which can lead to passive aggressive behavior or avoidance tactics. I I wish I had this one because I really am over overdoing. <laughs> I, I I will just talk to anybody, tell them what is on my mind. I I'm not sure that's so good, good a way to, to deal with life right now. Yeah. So is it a bad thing to to um avoid avoid uh confrontation and you stay silent so you uh don't respond to criticism and negative thoughts. You just don't say anything. No, you no, I, it's you not, say, is it something bad doing that? No, no, it's not a bad thing. But what's bad is is when we do that and stay silent when we know we Danny, should. Danny, Danny, you you know you you your mind is telling you the spirit is telling you say something do something and and then you you say oh but or like what defending your, like defending yourself say something to defend yourself yes yes there are times when you should say something you, you know and, and sometimes that's because we're not really trained how to say something because right. the 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 way we are trained to respond is not is a reaction when you react you speak out of turn. So, mm -hmm. so instead of saying, instead of saying, um, what I hear you saying is this, or, or what I'm understanding you to say is this. We say, we say, you're trying to tell me, you're trying to, so, so most of our reactions, they're accusatory. Mm. Okay, and it could lead but, to to, to something. Yeah, but when it's done correctly, 
it's it's a response and not a projection on the other person. It's a response that says, this is how I received what you said, and and I think it's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Whereas we would begin with, what you did is inappropriate, which is accusing the, the other person. Yeah. So I, I I had that in in my class today, you know, this this um man, he's an older student and he thinks he knows everything. And I'm I think I mentioned him at the beginning of the program. He's he checks everything on Google. He has to you know he has to push back on everything. <laughs> and and today he was trying to get into an argument with one of the other students, a, an older woman. She asked a question and he answered it. She she didn't ask him a question. She asked me a question, but since he's the <laughs> smart one in the room, he answered it. And when, when he was finished answering, which was, he was incorrect, and I corrected him. I didn't confront him. I just simply said, "Give if you, upon giving this question further thought, I would recommend the answer to be." In, he couldn't take me on, so he took her on, <laughs> and and he was he was like, "Well, what kind of dumb question is that? Hold it a minute." Mm -hmm. I, I I had to call him out. Hold it a minute. You cannot speak to her like that. And this is not a forum for that kind of discussion. If you have something to say, wait till the That's end. That's it, the sweetie. That's it. That's and, all I got. All yeah. gone. Yeah. You want your dinner back? You want the rest of your dinner? <laughs> Here, I'll give you dinner. Uh, somebody's talking to their <laughs> pet. <laughs> It, it, it sounds like um, Veronica. I think I think you're unmuted, Veronica. Uh, yeah, I was. I forgot that I was talking to you guys about your cat, and then I yeah. I met my nieces, and she has four dogs over here. Oh, oh and wow! Two Pomeranians came over, and I just gave them their dental their dental treat after they eat, and yes. one one Dotson. And then the fourth one went to his mom. He's a terrier. But right now there's three right here now. But normally there's, oh well, no, normally there's three. But sometimes we get the fourth one for a long time. So yeah. the two Pomeranians yeah. just came around. And he's like, looking like anything else. And I was like, no, nope, that's it. I'm not giving you anything else. Uh -huh. I can put your dinner back down that you didn't finish eating. Yeah. It, I digress. <laughs> yeah. That's what the that's what why we get together on Wednesday nights to oh my god <laughs> dig into all aspects of life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So avoidance of conflict is a sign of an a, an adult child, meaning that there's not integration. Now I should have said from the beginning. Just one of these things does not make one an adult child, but an abundance, a cluster of them does indicate that there is an adult child. But the, the good thing about it is that none of us can diagnose ourselves or others just from this little bit of information that I'm sharing. What I'm sharing is just to make us aware of how these things um, define or describe us. And, 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 and we shouldn't take somebody else's um, d designation as, as the law. Somebody else, if somebody says, you know, you're suffering from avoidance of conflict, that's their opinion. 
because and people love to make these judgments in one conversation mm -hmm. they don't yeah. know your whole life mm -hmm. or the unfolding of your life at that particular time so it's so, good um, Go ahead. that's I like to hear when you say when you know what happens and you say when you become aware do yes. not see I love that statement, and I think that's what Demel is saying too. Yes, yes. Do not, because now you're aware. Yes. So everything is going to flow the way it ought to. Yes, yeah. yes. I like that. Yes, that's yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I learned from him. You, As you <laughs> read, you will see how much of an influence he has had on my thinking, my teaching, my living, my everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another characteristic is obsessive thinking. Obsessive thinking is a tendency to ruminate on negative thoughts or worries, often leading to anxiety or stress. Now, I, I suffered from this. There was a time if I walked into a room and I saw a group of people talking and they stopped talking when I came up, I would swear they were talking about me. Mm -hmm. if, even if they never knew me, you know, I'd I'd be I'd be in the airport. I see what's the why the cat is behaving like that. I bet he wants food because he's, he's tearing up a paper bag and chewing on it. But anyway, yeah, this obsessive thinking. You know, you you walk you walk into the church lobby and a group of people are talking. And you come by and they stop talking. And immediately you think, they were talking about me, that's why they won't keep talking. And and then and then it takes you into, I wonder what they were saying about me. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I should ask what somebody it's 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 very crazy, this obsessive thing. I'm so <laughs> bad I'm over it. Yeah. It took up too much of my time and too many hours of my life and 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 then we'll we'll end on this one and continue the list next week fear of intimacy oh let me see next week is is you're is you're not here next week is is next week march yes yeah and you're away yeah yes uh, yeah, that's the sixth. Yeah, I'm away that week, that mm -hmm. day. Yeah. So fear of intimacy. It's a fear of emotional closeness with others, often stemming from a lack of trust or past trauma. You know, um, so many people relate intimacy to sex, and mm -hmm. and and that's so far from it. Mm -hmm. In 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 Genesis chapter two. The Bible says that Adam and Eve, the man and woman, were naked and they were not ashamed. That's the best description I know of intimacy. When, when you have nothing to hide. When in, and I'm speaking in a relationship. When, no secret. When you have no secrets. When even if you did something bad, you you feel safe saying to that person in the relationship, this is what I did. So many marriages are failing because of secrets, you know, hidden truths about one or the other, because they just cannot um, come to terms with it. And, and because they're afraid of intimacy, they're afraid of being naked to another person. Yeah. So in relationship, Pastor Hybert is supposed to um talk about everything in your life, all your background, everything that went on before? No, you don't have to. But opportunity comes and you should grab it. When an opportunity comes to say, you know, I use just like on this program, you know, as we're talking, we we feel safe with each other. Mm -hmm. So so we can say, you know, 
I, obsessive thinking was something that I that. But I, I, I wouldn't go out on the street and say, oh, by the way, obsessive thinking was. <laughs> okay. You see, we, 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 we're now feeling safe with each other. So we can say, oh, that was me. Oh, that was. But if we weren't safe, we would not say these things. Right. Yeah. I like what you said about. Uh, judgmental, the judgmental one. Yeah. Uh, so often I hear like someone has an opinion of someone else. Yeah. And I, well, even, you know, I, and I'm really working hard on that on myself as well, because um, it used to be that I'd go by a yard that, let's say, the grass needed cutting or there were a lot of weeds or something. And I'd say, oh, those people are so lazy. They won't even get out and cut their grass, you know. <laughs> Yes, but then yes. I say to myself, but they may be very ill or they may have a, a family member <laughs> who's dying that, you know, taking up all their time or whatever. You know, there's many yes. reasons why the grass isn't cut, right? Not yes. only because they're lazy. And I, I would like that to be my first response all the time. But yes. you hear people mm -hmm. so often just, just making judgments right off the hop. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think who are you to judge, you know, and because, and it's teaching me a lot because I yeah. see it myself, you know, yes. and, um, and I just hate that. I, I want my first response to be full of grace. Yes. And it's yes. very yes. rarely that. <laughs> and, 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 and my, you know, you know, just, she says, I'm very aware of that. You're mm -hmm. now aware of it. Guess what? You it'll it'll mm -hmm. start disappearing. Well, it is it is improving. Yeah. I'll tell you, it yeah. is improving. Yes. So. Awareness, awareness clears up just mm -hmm. about everything. Mm. Yeah, because I'm not but, as I'm judgmental as I used to be. I've come a long way because that was yeah. me. But I did hear once: do not judge others by your own values yes. because mm -hmm. I don't know what theirs are. And yes. boy, did that ever set me right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Everybody's priorities are different, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ladies, it's 832. Time to call it a day. <laughs> and... All right. Well, have a, a wonderful time in um, South Africa. Yes. Yes. Oh, I... yeah. Why are you coming oh. back so quickly? I'm speaking three times. I'm coming back so quickly because I have to teach my class on Tuesday. I get back mm -hmm. on Monday and I have to teach on Tuesday, wow. Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, that's going to be and, tough. And, and, and then I have a week off because it's spring break. I wish I wish they had the dates during my spring yeah. break. Yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. That doesn't make any sense yeah, to go does. to South Africa and stay for just a couple of days. Yes, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense, but the, that's the life I live. <laughs> I, I travel, well, travel I want to ask if yeah, I want to ask if you could keep me in prayer. Um, I am the youngest of ten. Uh huh. Ooh. And two siblings have passed. Oh. Technically, three. Three siblings have passed, and. I am the only daughter living. That my mother had seven boys and three girls. Yes. And we have a family call every Sunday at seven since the pandemic. Yes. Mainly because my mother was in a senior building that you couldn't go in to visit her. You would have to come bring her out. And my sister, who has now passed, was diagnosed with lung cancer oh. and passed. So anyway, that's I'm saying that to let you know the female influence on the family. Yes. And I've been trying, I've been listening, trying to figure out it's like I thought I understood what a narcissist was, but I don't. I do know that so I am the youngest and when you're the youngest, you have to be heard. Mm -hmm. And if you have strong men in the family, mm -hmm. 
you know, you have to kind of fight to speak. Yes. And I think when I'm fighting to speak, they are not used to hearing that. Yes. They are taking it like I'm being argumentative. Yes. But I'm speaking technically the same way they speak. Yes. <laughs> you know, we're used to um I'm not saying this is a healthy way to communicate. Healthy for me is different than healthy for you. Yes. And if yes. if we can talk and interrupt each other as long as you're able to come back and finish what saying what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It's okay to interrupt. But when you interrupt, but then when someone goes to interrupt you, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. And so I am trying really hard uh, because I'm the only at Venice in my family. My mother's at Venice. I'm at Venice, but none of my siblings. Yeah. My brother was, but then he went to Muslim and blah, blah, blah. Now he's in the first day church, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, I am trying to be a light for them. Mm -hmm. Meaning like we have a group chat. I send every, every other day or so. uh, Although I haven't sent Sunday, I'll send something like, like one of those cute little pics that you see that'll point you to Christ. Something yeah. really simple, like don't something really cute. Let me see. Let me pull up something really. So you know, it's not like. And then every now and again, I'll put like a general health meeting, a health Zoom on there for them yeah. to encourage them to be more healthy or whatever. So like one time, I sent um, the best project you will ever work on is you, mm. or the one of my sent. Dear God, fix me when I'm the problem and protect me when I'm not. Or prayer works always has always will and the background is just a beautiful background anyway just very simple things very yeah. simple nothing ellen white nothing yeah. really with the real scripture on it you know but something pointing to christ don't yeah. trade god's timing for your deadline something like that you know something yeah. very just to point people to recognize that he's there yes i'm trying to be a light i am But I'm telling you, I am getting the way they treat me. It's so rude, disrespectful. And I happen, you know, some of them, I know one in particular treats his wife or at least just disrespectfully, I'll say, like disregard, like she doesn't have a say, like he has to run the show. And, and he just, he happened to mention on the Zoom, on the, excuse me, on the conference call that I wanted to be in control. And in my mind, I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I just want, it's my turn to speak. And when it was my turn to speak, you know, we go from oldest to youngest, you say whatever you want. When it was my turn to speak, um, he said, well, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute now. Da, 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 da. Meaning like he's going to mute his phone. He's not going to be here, but he said what he needed to say. Then when I was speaking, I said, okay, no problem. You can meet me back. back. And he's like, well, are you going to get to your point? And I was like, well, this is my time to talk and I can say what I would like to say. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking rudely. I am talking assertively because mm-hmm. you will not be heard if you do not mm-hmm talk assertively now I would never talk to you this way or or Susan this way or Michelle this way but I will in to them uh anyway and I just I really got the thought it's been bothering me ever since I said Lord you have to help me reconcile this because I can't I'm not gonna go to heaven like this mm-hmm. and it's it's like I feel like they're the people I need to distance myself from but I thought, well, how in the world am I going to distance myself from them if I'm supposed to be the light? If I'm the light, how in the world am I going to distance myself? And I was like, Lord, have mercy. And then, and then I'm like, well, you're distancing yourself. And then, oh, what happens if you, you know, y'all both going to be in heaven? How you going to be distancing yourself if y'all both going to be in heaven? Anyway, and so I just keep my relationship with my siblings in prayer and it's really weird because one brother it's almost like if one brother says it then the 
others will follow. Yeah. And no one will go against what that one brother is saying. Mm -hmm. Everybody, it's like, and it's like that one brother is the brother that people go to to borrow stuff from. He's the one that used to have the nice house everybody wanted. Now other brothers have equal or better houses. Um, and it's like, I've never borrowed from him. Like he's the one every, at some one point or another, he'll say, he might bad mouth one brother and nobody, you know, they'll get into it, whatever. But that one brother, I personally feel the reason why he won't really stand up for himself is because he knows he's going to need him again. He's going to one day go to borrow from him. He doesn't want to burn that bridge, but I've never borrowed from him. I will not borrow from him. It, it just, I saw it and I was like, if I ever need something, if I don't, if I can't do it, gee, honey, baby, I won't have it. Uh uh, I won't have it. So I I see that dynamic, but and you know, and I and it's funny, my oldest brother, who was was our disciplinarian, he whooped us. My mother never whooped us. He whooped us. Whooped us for real, whooped us like call mm -hmm. CPS, whoop you. Um and even he I'm hearing on the phone, I'm so surprised that he's letting that being done or letting that being said or not stand, not even saying what he says when they're not on, he'll say, look, they're supposed to be here. The call is at seven. If they're not on, then let's go. We, we're not calling everybody. They need to make this a priority. They're not making this a priority. Let's move on. We got other things to do with our day. Mm -hmm. I used to call people. I send a text 15 minutes before the call. Here's the conference call. It's in 15 minutes. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to, let me stop. Let me stop. The point is, even my oldest brother isn't standing up. He is the less he's not the strong person verbally like he used to be now he's like you know what i'm not raising my blood pressure up i'm not gonna argue I, look y'all do what y'all gonna do that's what he'll do now but this yeah. that one brother eric that everyone tends he's the the showboat and others duplicate that my youngest brother the one closest in age to me he's a showboat they're like many me many me's and I just like, these people are very disrespectful. They're disrespectful. They're disrespectful, deliberately disrespectful to me. He literally said, one of them said, are you, I don't know if I, I think I said this already. Are you going to get to your point or what? And I'm like, wait a minute. When you had your monologue, no one said, hurry up. We listened to you. Well, we listened to you. Well, well, we'll, we'll definitely pray. For you and your family. Thank relatives. you. I'm sorry for taking up oh, taking no. up way oh, no. more time than we need, but, but I just wanted you to recognize because yeah. I really I want to distance myself. I really do. I as look, as long as I have my mother, which I do, I see her on the camera. We have cameras in the house. I go and visit her. I'm so it's not my mother is not involved in this at all. Mm -hmm. But they are oh and it's yeah. like they feed off each other's negativity towards me. It's almost like they're they're a mean boys club. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't well, that weird? A mean boys yeah. club. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's pray about it right now. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll pray if you don't mind. Oh, no, I thank you, please, because I, I want to move on. I don't want to be like this. I want my response to be one that is pleasing in God's sight, but also yeah. healthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dear God, you have heard from Veronica with her own voice the appeal that we come together as a group to mm -hmm. pray for her in her family relations. Obviously, there are... <laughs> various things going on which are not um which are inexplicable to us because we're not part of the beginning of it and the unfolding of it but she has been and so you know her heart you know the thoughts you know what would be best for them and we're just 
intervening on her behalf. We've grown to know her and care for her, and we want to see this desire of her heart answered. And you did promise that you would give us the desire of our hearts. And while we are attempting to be obedient and to experience the abundant life that you've given us, we're asking you to just step in and you be the voice, you be the one with the authority, you be the one that brings mm -hmm. about a, settle, a settling sense among the family that they are family, that they are one, and and okay. and that these issues, when it come when it's compared to life, these issues are nothing. They they are bec because if one of them should suddenly pass away, all of this would be forgotten as they grieve the loss because they love each other. They mm -hmm. obviously love each other. That's why they gather together um, often to to be connected. So please, God, help Veronica and her family see a way through this 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 misty relationship and make it clear to them how valuable they are to each other and and how important it is that they have time to hear one another's voices so bless them. bless their next conversation in such a powerful way that we'll hear testimony of how you have intervened and we thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus name amen amen, amen.